Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. We're going to wrap up the 2023 season today with a look at one of the key decisions growers will make in early 2024. What should they plant first, corn or soybeans? It's a discussion that happens every winter. And my guests today are going to have some new research that will certainly add to the conversation. They are OMAFRA soybean specialist Horace Bonner and University of Guelph graduate student Seth Ritzma. Welcome, gentlemen. Um, Great to have you on the Soybean School. Merry Christmas, Bern and Seth. Nice to see you. Merry Christmas, you guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, Horst, let's kick this off with you. You know, from a soybean perspective, you know, what's the crooks of the argument for planting soybeans before corn? So we've known for many years that timely planting is important for maximum yield. What we're trying to decide now, Bern, is how early do we go push it right into April, into that very first window? And then is it even more important to plant soybeans very early than corn? Uh, because there is that trend in the U.S., right? And we, we, we've never had a nice data set before comparing soybeans planted on the same day versus corn. And that's, that's where this project started. Hey, and a great segue. Let's dig into that research, and uh, and that's going to drive the rest of our conversation. Seth, um, this is your graduate thesis work um, that focuses on maturity selection and planting date for both both corn and soy. Um, tell us about it, and and what are you hoping to learn? Yeah, so for the project, really our, our main objectives are we want to investigate maturity selection in corn and soybean across different planting dates. And do this, we want to create a profitable data back on tariff specific recommendations on maturity selection. We have already great recommendations uh, for maturity uh, based on the typical planting date from uh, OMAFRA, but we don't have like a concrete data set when planting later or earlier in the season. And uh, we also want to figure out why are these crops yielding more with these planting dates and the reason why because of that. Yeah. So how is it set up? Tell me, uh, we'll put your dates here and, and a little bit about the, the configuration of the research here on the, on the slide. Yeah, so we have three different locations, Winchester, our Alora, and Ridgetown, just so we can get a, a wide range of CHUs, different climates, areas. And our three planting dates are early, normal, and late season, which consists of uh, April 20th, May 20th, and June 15th. We don't always hit these, but they are our target planting dates for each season. They can they can change based on what is early and what is later that season. And we're working with 12 corn varieties and 10 soybean varieties. The CHUs for corn range from 2100 uh, to all the way to 3500. And for maturity groups for soybean, it's from a 0.1 to a 3.6. So wide range of planting dates and maturities. Now, there's lots uh, of insights and results here to unpack. Let's start with uh, the yield question, Seth. And, you know, and when it comes to early planting or first, planting first, what wins the yield challenge? Is it corn or soybeans? Yeah, what's, what's really interesting is when we look at the data is both crops benefit from planting early. But when we're comparing the two, Corn seems to be the one that uh, the return is a, is a bit higher than soybean. When we look at our 2022 yield data from our three locations, we had an early planting advantage of 25, 59, and 16 bushels an acre for Ridgetown, Winchester, and Alora, which are pretty significant numbers. And when we're comparing these numbers for the early one, we're just taking the long maturities. So whatever the recommended is for that area, we're going past that, and we're just comparing it to the typical uh, planting date. And then also for, for soybean, when we look at the 2022 data, we still see an advantage, but it's three bushels an acre, one and uh, three bushels an acre for Ridgetown, uh, Winchester, and Alora. So as I mentioned, both uh, beneficial, but a little bit higher when it comes to corn. Mm. Now, um, the yield numbers certainly support planting corn first. And Horace, I want to get your thoughts on these numbers, but there's a lot more to the story here. Um, you know, what are you seeing here from a, a risk perspective? You know, Seth's data does show that corn really does struggle um, if it runs into some tough weather after it goes in the ground. Yeah, ab absolutely, right? That's one of the big advantages to soybeans, that they don't need a perfect 
plant stand. And, and we've all seen soybeans come up over a number of weeks. And in the end, you know, you get the combine in there and it doesn't matter much. On corn, of course, it does matter. And, and you need that perfect spacing. If I could just go back one second to that, because it's really a cool number when you compare the average bushels gain for soybeans over the last two years for that first window compared to a typical window was 4.4 bushels. You multiply that by $16, you get 70 bucks. You can have $70 extra an acre just for seeding in a really good early window, right? But here's, here's the number we didn't have before, Bert. When you compare that to corn, the average number was 26 bushels, what, from what Seth has, has, has shown us here, you multiply that by six and you get $156. So certainly, to your point, you know, we can't uh, ignore the fact that corn needs to be planted in a timely window. Soybeans do. We, we want you to plant soybeans early. But boy, the corn number is compelling. Hmm. And Seth, back to you. I mean, uh, how are you calculating, you know, that 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 corn yield based on those early emergers yeah so as we talked about before we had some really great numbers in terms of early planting advantage for both both soybean and corn but we also have to mention the other side of it where it may not it will be a disadvantage planting early and a great example of this is in uh, 2021 and 2022 uh in winchester so when we're comparing the two crops corn as a whole is much more competitive compared to soybean uh, and even emergence is really crucial for this. So what we found in 2021 for Winchester, there was a minus 15 bushel an acre uh, disadvantage when planting early, but then in 2022, it was a plus 33 bushel an acre difference. And we looked into why, why this is happening. We found that in 2021, 70% of the early, uh, uh, the plants from the early planting date emerged in that three day window compared to 94% of them in the typical planting window. So a 24% difference compared to 2022, which was 78 compared to 88. Mm -hmm. Still a 10% difference, but not as significant. So it goes back to the point of even emergence is really crucial for corn. And when it comes to yield, you can get higher yields for corn, but it's, there can be a bit more of a risk when it comes to that compared to soybean. And we took some of this information and we're doing this in Alora. We're doing a a, a basic flag test where we, we mark down the date of uh, emergence for each corn plant in a small section in each plot. And what we're finding is there's a trend of when there's uneven emergence, uh, it tends to decrease yields. And a day five emerging plant is really hard to compete with a day one emerging plant when they're, when they're beside each other. And we can see the yield drop as uh, there's uneven emergence between. Mm -hmm. Seth, let's take another look at soybeans here from a research perspective. Um, you know, when we're planting uh, soybeans early, what's your data telling us about th that maturity selection? You know, are we selecting shorter, adapted, longer season varieties? Yeah, when we look at the data, when planting early, there seems to be a, a trend of if you're planting early, you want to aim for those longer maturing uh, varieties due to if you get a, a poor stand count due to the climate, they can kind of fill in more and make use of that growing season. But not only when planting early, when we're in that typical window, we're finding you might even want to increase the CHUs past the recommended ones uh, based on the data that we found that you can still, they'll have time to finish off and still yield high based on the uh, CHU recommendations for the area right now. What are you seeing there, horse? That story drive yeah. with you? Well, it's, it's another compelling story. If we look at these Winchester, num Winchester Research Station numbers for a second, you can see that all the way through right to the long maturing beans for both the first and then the more typical planting date, they yielded more. In other words, you know, the longer, the longer, the longer variety you, you chose, the more yield you got. And then, of course, ultra long was too long. But here's my point. That long maturity one that we chose there was a 1.7 maturity group. Right now, we have that Winchester location assigned as a 1.0 maturity group. So there's, there's pretty good evidence that we should be growing even in a normal, typical window, and especially in an early 
uh, window, longer season beans for maximum yield, and we've had no problems getting them to finish. That's the other cool part. Now, uh, you know, there's there's a lot to pull together here yet, but we're, we're working on updating the maturity zones in Ontario, and this will be part of that data yeah. set. Hey, final point for you, uh, Horace, based on what you've seen uh, from the research perspective, you know, how does it influence the, you know, that corn or soy first planting decision? decision you know, what should uh, growers take away from Seth's research? Yeah, you should buy two planters and both be out there on the same day. That's really the story. Like, I, I think it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a game that we're playing here, corn versus beans. The truth is both crops really respond well to timely planting in a fit window, right? We're not talking about planting into unfit conditions. Are there some benefits to planting soybeans first? Yes. And that is back to what Seth said about these plant stand uh, variabilities that don't matter as much for soybeans compared to corn. So there is something to be said, but like, like I, I can't get over that 26 bushels extra for corn. We, we can't ignore that, man. That, <laughs> so, so you tell me, Bern, you look at those numbers and you say, get out there and do both. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, you know me, I ain't going to make that decision. I'm going to let the growers and the, and the viewers do that. Hey, Seth, final word to you. And that, you know, we've just scratched the surface of your data. You know, when will you be sharing all your data? You know, what's next for you and your research? Yeah, so we have a really great data set uh, from a wide uh, variety of, uh, of years and locations. And we're hoping to get this done uh, around the springtime. And I'll, I'll be defending around that time. Like I said, with this data set, it's... Uh, there's always so many factors when it comes to that, so we can't draw any major conclusions for it right now, but the goal is this will help farmers improve their planting date decisions and maturity selections for when that time comes. 